Hello, I'm Dr. John Mulcahy. I'm the director of the observatories at the Carnegie Institution for Science here in Pasadena, California. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about an exciting anniversary from one of our most famous uh, Carnegie scientists, Edwin Hubble. Uh, 2023 is a, a hundred year anniversary of really, really what I consider Hubble's most um, important work, and that is effectively the discovery of the universe. Um, many people don't know the universe uh, was discovered right here in Pasadena in this building about a hundred years ago. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, at the time of Edwin Hubble in the early 1920s, there was a big debate in the starting about the size and scale of the universe. Uh, there were folks who believed the universe was just a single collection of stars we now call the Milky Way galaxy. And then there were others who thought the universe might be bigger and include other external systems like the Milky Way. And so this was a huge controversy in the early 1920s. Um, just how big was the universe? So Edwin Hubble arrived here at the uh, observatories back in 1919 uh, from the University of Chicago. And Edwin Hubble was quite fortunate because when he arrived here, we had just completed uh, what was then the biggest telescope in the world at the Mount Wilson, the 100-inch telescope. And so using that telescope, Hubble was very interested in uh, studying these objects known as novas. So novas are stars uh, that have these events where they get very, very bright suddenly, and then they'll fade uh, for weeks or months or sometimes even years. Uh, over time. And so Edwin Hubble was studying these objects in what was known at the time as the Andromeda Nebula. Uh, and then uh, he had been studying these objects for quite a long time. He'd take a series of plates over multiple nights and just watch for these stars that would suddenly get bright and then fade, as I said, over weeks or months. So uh, in October uh, 1923, Hubble uh, was taking one of these plates of the uh, Andromeda Nebula and he had realized by comparing it to a previous night uh, observation that there was one of the objects he had classified as a nova that had gotten brighter, uh, fainter, and then brighter right again uh, within a few days. And this was not the behavior of these novas. These novas typically will fade for, uh, as I said, sometimes even hundreds of years. And so he knew right away that this was not a nova, that he had misclassified this object. But what was truly exciting was he realized right away that this was a different type of star, what we call a variable star. And he guessed that this was in fact what we call a Cepheid variable star. These are very important stars in astronomy even today. They've been used for well over 100 years to measure distances to objects. And the reason for this is these Cepheids have very regular behavior. They uh, get brighter, fainter, or brighter. And the time it takes between one peak and the next peak is related to the amount of energy the star um, projects. And so uh, if you can measure that how, how often the star is fading and getting brighter again, one can then convert that into the, how much um, light is being emitted by the star, compare that to how bright the star appears in the sky, and you can work backwards and calculate the distance. So Hubble immediately recognized this, and on the plate he got very excited, and he wrote VAR with an exclamation point. This is a very famous VAR plate, I would argue probably the most uh, important uh, photographic plate ever taken in astronomy, because he recognized his excitement was because he knew he could measure a distance to this smudgy thing on the sky. Which, as I said earlier, people were not sure if that was a distant thing or part of our own Milky Way. So Hubble's uh, a work on, on Andromeda was only possible because of the earlier work of Henrietta Leavitt, uh, who was one of the computers at Harvard. Uh, she was the one who determined the relationship between uh, the variable period of these Cepheid variables and uh, their amount of energy or their luminosity coming out. And Hubble himself acknowledged this uh, well before anybody else, that his work really would not have been possible without her uh, pioneering work a decade earlier. So um, Hubble uh, did this measurement and realized right away that in fact this Andromeda nebula was much further away than anybody had actually guessed. Uh, and in fact, it had to be a separate system based on its large size on the sky um, and its distance. This was a very large system. In fact, it's even larger than our own Milky Way galaxy. So Hubble effectively, with this image, discovered the existence of other galaxies. And that effectively was the discovery of the universe. Hubble took the universe from the single collection of stars, the Milky Way, to the immense system we know of today that's filled with, now we know, trillions of galaxies. Hubble would go on, of course, to do many other things. Um, some would argue that his, his equally important result was the results about five or six years after this 1923 result, where he showed that, in fact, the universe was expanding. Uh, it was a result that Hubble himself, he never said the universe was expanding, he was very uncomfortable with that idea. But his data actually did, was the first time that really conclusively showed, in fact, that the universe was expanding. And of course, this is a hugely important result as well in our understanding of the universe. 
And so um, Hubble in the 1920s had these two huge results, which really, with no doubt in my mind, make him the most important astronomer since the time of Galileo. Good afternoon. My name is Sam Hale. I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Mount Wilson Institute and the Mount Wilson Observatory. And I am also blessed to be the grandson of George Ellery Hale, the founder of the Mount Wilson Observatories. Behind me is the 100-inch telescope dedicated in 1917. In October of 1923, this is the telescope that Edwin Hubble discovered the universe as John Mulcahy has just described to you. It was this discovery which showed that the Milky Way is not the only galaxy in what was then the universe, but there are many more. And we truly discovered what the universe was. In 2024, Mount Wilson Observatory is going to be celebrating the year of Hubble. We are going to be having lectures, concerts, art exhibits, tours, and access to the largest telescopes uh, available in the world to the public, our 60-inch and 100-inch telescope. Right now, we are going to show you a picture of the Andromeda galaxy, the galaxy which is our nearest neighboring galaxy, a mere two and a half million light years away. So stand by, and here is the Andromeda galaxy, the galaxy of the century.